I think the two ways to manage risk is one, you want to limit your losses, which is essential. But two, you have to have a good foundation for bull markets, choppy markets, bear markets, and you have to have a filter for when to use different buy techniques. Because the same buy technique that will be amazing and rock solid in a bull market or in an accumulation phase will not work the same way in a choppy or a downtrend. So if you don't have a way to identify what type of trend you're in, uh, that in a sense is going to be a really big risk part, a big big part of risk that you're not taking care of, that you don't know you need to take care of. And William O'Neill, in his approach, basically has his market rules that helped him d- decide when to take positions or not. But, you know, just taking that same kind of logic, you need to apply what's your filter for when you're going to be taking your swing trades to the long side, or what's your filter to use certain buy techniques or uh, versus others. And, and that's something that I really focused on over the years. And, and when I start to put great attention there, even though I'd always limited my losses, when I started to reduce that churn and that number of just that, just getting run over in a bad market, that's when I would make a lot of profit, but then keep that profit. And that's, that's really the big difference because any, anyone can make money. It's, it's keeping that money and constantly growing it. That's the, the big difference. Yeah, 100%. And I want to dive a little bit deeper into that because I, I'm sure that's a, that's a big question people have. Obviously, 2020, great for trending markets, mm-hmm. holding positions, position trading. Uh, 2021, 2022, a little bit, definitely a lot choppier and, and you're going to have to kind of adapt your style a little bit and change your buying techniques. So um, in terms of differentiating between different environments, what kind of guidance would you have for traders in terms of you know, market indicators, looking at breadth. Um, I know you love the new high, new lows. You, you post that pretty much yeah. daily. Um, so what what kind of things are you looking at? And maybe even analyzing your own trades, looking at your performance, what's your average gainer? Uh, what do you kind of look for to determine whether, all right, this is a trending environment. I might look for more longer term yeah. trades versus, you know, this is a more of a swing type environment. I have to change my, my risk management and, and my sell rules accordingly. You know, so it's funny, obviously, most new traders will typically come into the market in a bull market, and that's just normal, myself included. That's that's what draws you in. But these really hot bull markets like 2020 are actually the, the outlier. It's not typically like that. And that's why most professional investors will end up being frustrated because you'll see these, these new, new people to the market probably beating professionals because it, markets don't typically just go up, stay up, and keep going up. There's usually a lot of give, give and take. And so most professionals who have been through the grind are less willing to kind of hold these positions for these big advances or, or aren't putting the gas on as much. And um, and so, you know, if that's your only experience or if you build a system only to work well in 2020, even if it would work amazingly well in 2020 or, or, or any other good training market, that's going to be the minority of the time. So even if it works great in that environment, you'll end up getting killed long term. And that's why, you know, breakouts will work only in uh, rare periods. But the thing is, when you go back and study and you look at the best stocks and you look historically, it's deceiving because you say, oh, look, there's that breakout and look at that big run. But it's very easy to glance over very choppy periods or or downtrends and say, oh, I wouldn't have traded that market. But in reality, you probably would be trading that market if you're trading full time. And so, you know, as as having been a professional trader, a short-term trader for many years, I I just kind of learned that buying breakouts are really dangerous. That's what I alluded to earlier where where I said that, you know, typically would be a time to buy. I just knew as a shorter term trader, and I'd probably want to go short here or selling my position. And so what I did, which uh, I haven't really seen a lot of people do, is I basically took all these different patterns I used and I put them into four different categories. So a breakouts is one, a pullbacks is another, a coil patterns where there's volatility diminishing is another, and expectation breakers is a fourth. And so unless we're really early in a trend, and to deter- determine trend, I, I use basically what the Federal Reserve is doing, um, whether they're really helping the market or, or, or hurting the market in a sense. Unless we're really early in a trend, I, I tend to avoid breakouts because they they, they will often fail. Mm-hmm. And so then I'll, I'll work with other techniques. But yet it's important that you have all these tools in your toolbox because if you do run into a 2020, you want to be able to, to maximize those gains because those are those rare opportunities where you get, there's a, a lot of money to make. So I think that's that's where the trader with more experience can have a great 2020, but then after even in choppy markets, be able to adapt and have other tools to not just get chopped up with constant breakouts. So, so your system should be resilient enough to work even in choppy markets because most times the markets are choppy. So if you don't have that, most of the time you're going to be very frustrated. 